Amen. We appreciate being in the house of the Lord. Praise God for it. it is a blessing to come together with the people of God. Sometimes the enemy make us discount our presence being in the house of God. And the thought runs by your mind sometimes. Oh, they ain't going to miss me. Oh, it's all right if I'm not there. I'm not that important in this and that. The devil is a lie. Praise God. Because the word says where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. So every soul that we get in the house of God coming in the name of Jesus. Praise God. That means the presence of the Lord is showing up in the house. And where the presence of the Lord is, hallelujah. Praise God. You can watch the spirit of God begin to change some things. Hallelujah. Praise God. The body of Christ, we've got to learn that everything that we do is by faith, not by feeling. Praise God. Hallelujah. As usual, praise God, your pastor get fired up when he gets into the house of God with the people of God. I'm fired up before I get here, but when I get in the house of the Lord, praise God, that gets me even more excited. Praise God. And I don't know if y'all read your devotional today, but it said in there that uh, they were glad to go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And it says they'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to live in the finest of neighborhoods, finest of homes, have all the money, it's yet better to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. That's saying a whole lot. Praise God. And I just got excited about that as well. It's simple, but it's so true. Praise God, because it's tying in with the word this morning. And I thank God for all that's online and all that took their time. Praise God. And Reverend Stevens, I thank you for the press. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because God will reward the press. Amen. Praise God. We understand work, but one thing about it, whether he's working or not, he's going to make his way when he can get here. So we bless God and God honors that. Amen. You see, you got to understand this thing is all about the Lord. Hallelujah. Not about how I feel and all of that, but about what God is doing. Amen. While you're yet standing, because if not, I'm going to take off and go to preach. I'll tell you that right now. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And you have your Bibles and you're able to go with me. Go with me to Second Peter. Praise God. The third chapter. Praise God. Now, this is a word that we don't, you know, hear a whole lot about all the time, but it's a solid word and it's right for this season. Second Peter, the third chapter, beginning at verse two. Praise God. And I'm going to read a few of those verses, but I'm going to talk about a few of them all in the context of the message. Uh, praise God. And I will read it from the New King James Version. It says that she may be mindful of of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heaven and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, 
but that all should come to repentance. Let us pray. Praise God. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read the next three verses. Let me do that. Right. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in the holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of, the, of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you, Lord, for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered and that the word will fall on good soil, that you may produce the fruit that you desire in the lives of each and every one of your people. God, I give you freedom, Lord, to do what you will as you will. Have your way, Father, and we declare that the word of God will not go back forward, but the word will accomplish all that you're sending it to do. In the name of Jesus, it is so. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. And as I begin to um, look at the word of God, praise God, and begin to let this word meditate in my spirit, you know, we live in a society today that feel like they can do like they want to and that they're going to be here forever. They live as if there is no end to life. And as I was beginning to read here in 2 Peter, because the book of 2 Peter, praise God, is reminding the believers about the coming of the Lord. Praise God. And he, and he says, uh, you read later on in there, because I'll probably talk about a lot of the verses in the entire chapter there. But as you read about it, he says, this is the second letter, because what was going on is during that time you had uh, other uh, false prophets and all of that out there going about speaking a word that was contrary to what God's prophets had actually spoken and what God has said. And so as a result of that, the folk got. Like today, sometimes is folk have itching ears. If you preach like they want to want to hear you preach, you the greatest thing in the world. But even if you're preaching the truth and it ain't coming like they want it. Uh, you don't want to hear him. Can't do nothing. You know. They don't want to accept the truth because the lie is so much better or looks so much better based on presentation. But it's not about presentation, but it's about the word and where we stand with God. So if I had to use for a topic today, because I was trying to figure out, I said, there is no easy topic. But then the thing came to mind. And if I had to use for a topic, I would call it time and time again. And as we get into this word, you'll find out what I'm talking about. Because most of you, just like myself and everybody else, we have been hearing about the time that the Lord is going to return for his own. You've been hearing that message from a childhood. And what has happened is when you hear something so much, after a while, you tend to discount the word. And God brought to my spirit. It's like, son, it's just like you got children. And if you tell them, you keep doing that, I'm going to whip you. Child, do it again. You look at them, you say, if you keep doing that, I'm going to whip you. But you ain't whipped them yet. 
after a while, they do it several times and they hear the same message. Then they look at one another if they got siblings or friends or somebody say, they always say they're going to whip me. They ain't with me yet. <laughs> we go ahead on and do it one more time. What God was saying is the world have heard the message that Christ is on his way back. They've heard the message that there is going to be an end. And they have been encouraged to live for the Lord. But what has happened is those that desire to do what they want to do, they say, you've been hearing that from the beginning. And where is the promise that you talk about that the Lord is coming again? Well, God wants to remind us he's definitely coming again. Yeah. Yeah. Because the word says he's not slack concerning his promise. And he says that as we get into the last days, praise God, they're going to be scoffers or they're going to be mockers. Looking at you because you still talking about the Lord coming back and you going on to heaven and he's going to rapture you up. Praise God. And you're going to live in eternity with the Lord. But God's got a message for the world. You're going to live eternity regardless. But it's whether you will live eternity with him or eternity in hell. But you will live eternally. Praise God. And that's what the world is not making clear to the folk. But what the world is doing is sending a message saying they've been preaching that stuff and talking that stuff since I was a child. And everything seems to be getting better. The devil keeps painting the picture and making it look good. The devil learned how to do his wickedness in a more clever manner. And so folk is enjoying living on the earth that they forgot to look with the heavenly view. And that message has slipped into the church because the church has got too comfortable with the earthly point of view of things. And God is bringing a reminder to his people. You see, we got to understand something. God loves us so much. He's not going to let us walk in. Easy excuse for anyone when God returns and appears for his folk. Because the Bible even talks about, praise God, that whether you've heard the actual word of God or not, you can look at the firmament and you know it did not just happen. Praise God. And we have got to rig begin to look at what God says with his viewpoint. And if we are naming the name of Christ, what God wants is us to begin to walk. And as we walk what we talk, praise God, it's going to help those that's on the outside see the light that they want to come to the light and come out of that darkness. Because God said in his word, it's his will that he does not want any to perish, but that he want those to re re repent and come unto him. God loves all souls and he wants them in his kingdom. But you got to understand something that when God created these heavens, praise God, he existed before anything else was created. He was already here. And because he was already here with him and his father, they decided, praise God, let us make man. Praise God. And he said, let us make him after our own image. Praise God. And when he created man and put man in the Garden of Eden, praise God. What God did, now he's God. Which means he can do what he want to do, how he want to do it, and when he get ready to do it. But what he said was, I'm not going to make, and I'm paraphrasing, we're not making robots, somebody to do exactly what we want them to do. But what we will do is we will create them and give them the ability and give them the authority to dom have dominion over the earth. Because if you read your word in Genesis, when he created everything, the heavens and the earth and separated the waters, 
and all of that, where it was no longer all water, but it became land and water and all of that, he says to man, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over everything that creepeth upon the earth. So what God did is he put the management of earth in the hands of his people. And that is what he gave us the authority to have dominion over everything. So God had a plan and God got a time. But in that plan and in that time, what God was saying is, I'm going to give man some responsibility and I'm going to let man operate within my plan. But man is not going to stop what I've already spoken. And when we understand that, what God is saying is, I need my people to change their focus. Don't be so earthly minded that you miss out on what heaven is wanting to do here on earth. What heaven wants to do in your present life now. Because if we get so comfortable, we'll get caught into the world system trying to make things happen according to man and not according to God. And when we as believers in the family of God, we must understand that we are just pilgrims passing through this land. This is not our home. And we don't need to live like this is our permanent home, but we need to live in such a manner that we recognize where our eternity home will be. And when we begin to look at life in God's viewpoint, it's going to make what we see and experience here on earth in present time and in history, we're going to experience something much greater than what we have been experiencing because we have chosen to walk into that that has already been given through the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, where we will reign with him in eternity and live with him in eternity. But if we only operate according to this earthly system, you're only going to get so far as the earth rules and guidelines will allow and dictate. And that's where the frustration, aggravation, and all of that sets in. And when you begin to reflect, you begin to think about it. Because you hear the conversations all the time. You've got individuals seeking to do better. And as they press their way to further their education, to move up on the job and do all of that, they got somebody on the earth, in the natural, trying to block that move, even though the person is qualified to do the job. And it gets aggravating because here you are doing everything you know to do, been trained to do, and know how to do, but will not be given the opportunity because the authority is sitting in somebody else's hand like they got you on a string juggling and placing you, picking you up and moving you where they want you to be, not where you are qualified to be. That's why God is saying to my people, you can't live by the world system and expect that you're going to have heaven benefits. Now, do not get me confused because this does not mean that you're not saved and you're not going to heaven. Because salvation the word says it's by grace that we are saved and not of our works. So we get saved by the grace of God by exercising our faith to receive the gift given to us. But God saying, I put much more in you than just to make heaven. I have given you authority and responsibility to rule this earth. But you rule according to my rules and not the earth rules. Because earth is not your home. It's only temporary. But you've been sent from above because we've already seen in the word from previous messages. Because as I told you, God been sending a lot of word. But what he's doing is trying to encourage the body to be prepared 
as we get closer into the end times and have to begin to walk through some of the things that's going to begin to happen because the end time is approaching. Not even going to have to try to put no time frame and all of that in because the word did tell us right in here. It says one day is as a thousand years. It didn't say one day was a thousand, but it says as a thousand and a thousand years as one day. So in other words, we operate in time. God don't operate in time. He is. That's why when Moses was called to go deliver the boat and Moses said, well, who am I going to tell Pharaoh who sent me? God said, you tell him that I am that I am sent you. That's who sent you. You got the authority from the I am that I am. So in other words, whatever I need to be, when I need to be it, that's what's going to be. So the I am that I am is my name. And that's all he needs to know. God is a God in the present time. But we use time as measurement for us. And so what God does is he works in that time element that we understand as we work the plan. That's why when we look back, was it in um, was it First Peter or Second Peter when it says that he has already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness? In other words, he says, I know the end from the beginning before we ever hit this earth. God already knew what our end would be. Because he knew it all. And so if we have everything, God already knew. I put within you to do what I've called you to do. But I also put within you to do the thing that you desire, because that that you desire to build is I gave you that desire so that you could use that gift and that talent to benefit the kingdom of God and to expand the kingdom of God. And if you will work in that calling that I put within you and you will do that task as unto me, it'll get you where you need to be and my kingdom will begin to expand. And that is what Second Peter here is trying to remind them. This is the second letter that's being written to the believers because they had gotten off a of track from some of the false prophets out there. And then they begin to question and say, y'all been talking about this from the time and the folk talking about they done dead and gone and everything is still going on like it's been going on. Folk think like that today. And then they begin to think about it and we begin to think about it sometime now. Those that are in the word and a little active, Sometimes thoughts come across your mind or you get questions about some things you read in the word. You think about it, but you ain't quite bold enough to want to verbalize it. But it crossed your mind because other folk have reminded you of it. And I'll give you a good example. You know, you're talking to somebody about the Lord and doing that. And the first, you know, somebody experienced something tragic or something that just kind of shook their world. And you go in there trying to comfort them and, and talking about, you know, the Lord is with you and he got you and he's going to comfort. First thing they come out in their mouth because they're upset then. And some of these folk is church folk that's, that's naming salvation. But because it didn't go the way they prayed and the way they thought it ought to go, they got a little attitude with God. And they say, well, well, I thought God's supposed to know everything, and if God is God and can do anything, why did he let this happen to my loved one? Why did this happen to me? Why didn't God stop it? You know why God didn't stop it? Because he's God. And he says, I have given you authority and dominion to operate in. If I have given you the authority and called you to dominate, and you don't use that authority, what am I supposed to do about it? You're not walking in what's been given to you. It ain't my fault, because I set it up with the parameters that if you operate within these parameters, I'm still God, I'm still sitting on the throne, and I'm sovereign. But I've given you certain rights and certain things that I said is your responsibility. And when you act on that, 
which means that if I operate according to faith in line with that word, which is what my will is, I want you to understand, I'm not slack on my promises. I'm going to do my part. You do your part. And when you do your part, then I can intervene and bring minds forth. But because I put that responsibility and task on you, guess what? He waiting on us, not us waiting on him. Amen. God began to help me see a little clear about that. That's why it's all about relationship. And you keep hearing me saying that because anybody can be religious. All the false religions out there teaching non-doctrine according to God's word, they are religious because all religious is I go through the motions, do the same thing like I've always done it with nothing changing. I know the next step from one plus one is two or whatever, and I keep doing it that same way that gives me a good little feeling that I've done my part, and then when I finish up that ritual, then I go on about my business and ain't think about that ritual till the next time to go through that. That ain't what God looking for. God is looking for relationship so that everything that hits us, our first reaction is, what does God have to say about this? Not to go in panic mode, but to take our glasses and say, let's see what heaven got to say about it. Go to the word and see what the word has to say about what's going on. And then make your decision. Even the world will tell you don't make no hasty decisions in a crisis. Take time to stop, settle, and then move forward to begin to see. Because if you make a decision in the midst of crisis, you haven't even thought at all. And the enemy is feeding your mind all the time. And the first thing that comes to your mind is, this is what they say I'm supposed to do. But you are quoting what the world has said because you've heard how the world say handle this all the time. And you're not hearing the spirit of God that's saying, this is what my word says. Which one are you going with? Because we're so dominated by world influence and earthly values because we got tied into that earthly system and didn't even realize it. And God is trying to infiltrate to bring that in because we fed the earthly values more than we fed the word of God. That's why we have to feed on the word so that our spirit man will be full of the word that God can bring it back to my remembrance when I need it and that I'll be in a position to hear when he begins to drop it in my spirit. The enemy don't want that. That's why the enemy keeps devising and coming up with stuff we call them distractions to pull you away. Because, you know, you get ready to do something. Say, well, I believe I'll go read the word today. You grab your Bible, get sit down and read the word. Phone ring. Hey, child, what you doing? I thought I'd go over here. You want to go with me? Yeah, I believe we will close the Bible, get on up and go. You was getting ready to read your word. The enemy knew that. You getting ready to feed your spirit, man. And he does not want that word to go into you because the Bible says, as you come into the light, walk in the light. When you get into that word, it's going to show you you. It's going to show me me. And then I said, "Whoa, Lord, I got a lot of work to do. Because I see where I fall short. But thank you for being patient and working with me. And then as I get into that word, you find out He's teaching me how to move on up because my spirit man is getting the nutrients that I need. And so all Peter was reminding those saints, he said, y'all been taught the word. You have the truth. You ain't got to listen to them scoffers that come in and them folk that's mocking the gospel talking about y'all. The folk been talking about that since a child and some of them preaching that mess. They done dead and gone and everything is still continuing as it were, you just heard the word read. It says, and it's still continuing. They done fell asleep. They done died and everything is still going. But God has given them time to turn and come unto him. That's where they're missing. But see, the enemy is smart because if you get to focusing on earthly views, 
then you're not even going to think heavenly because you're going to get so much education in the natural realm and so many accolades by nature. Everybody enjoys being rewarded and, 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 and received because folk do things so that people will accept them. But understand this, we're accepted by God and if we get accepted by him, all the other acceptance, that's fine and good, but they don't even compare. Because if I get accepted by everybody in the world and then get rejected by God, I have lost it all. And that's what Peter is trying to bring the reality of the word back into focus. And that is why God keeps sending these messages about building the relationship with him. So that we don't get frustrated when the world is mistreating us and knocking us down every time we get up. And because we like it, they block us. And then we get frustrated and we go find somebody else to speak that frustration and they join in the agreement with us. And we are aggravated and frustrated, but we yet haven't stopped and said, God, I need your help. Forgive me, I was trusting them folk instead of trusting you. Because the word of God said he will set one down and raise up another. And we always have to understand God has a timetable. Our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. But as we begin to build that relationship, we will be like our father. We will pick up those traits. Praise God. And he says that when they maintain that, they escape the notice that the word of God existed long ago and the earth was formed. See, what he was saying is, will you get going on your own thing? We forget about it. There was an earth before us. And the folk got wicked doing their own thing. And God told Noah, Go build me an ark and gave him the instructions on how to build it and then tell the folk it's going to rain. Built the ark during the day, went preaching at night. It's going to rain. Go back home. Some folk ain't seen no water. Ain't no water nearby. And he got to build this great big ark and folk looking at him like he's crazy. We're talking about the Lord is coming again and they've been hearing it forever and it's going in one ear out the other ear because they say they've been saying that same thing over and over and everything has appear to be getting better because everybody keeps creating and, and making this gadget and that gadget and life gets easier and easier and more convenient. And as I tell my wife all the time, convenience will cost you. When you want the easy thing, a few more dollars added on. Ain't nothing wrong with enjoying the comfort, but you need to understand convenience will cost you. Ease of life will cost you. There are consequences for everything we do, good and bad. I read it every time we do strips. Genesis 8 and 22. While the earth remains, they're going to be seed time and harvest. Whatever seed I sow, a harvest is coming from that seed. And I determine what kind of harvest because it's what kind of seed I sow. And how much of that seed I sow. God is saying, I ain't slight. The word Peter saying, I ain't, he, God ain't slight concerning his promise. What he said in his word, he going to fulfill his promise. But because he has given us responsibility, he's going to give us chance to step up and operate out of love and obedience into what he has called exercising the faith that he has called us to walk into and not be wavered or not be sidetracked because of what it looked like and what I hear. But we'll move because of what he says, what we have validated according to his word. And all he said is, Noah said it was going to rain, but it took 100 years. But the rain came. And when they saw the rain and wanted to get in, it was too late. God is saying, just as the rain came and flooded the creation and all before, he says, now it's being reserved for fire. 
So really and truly, that song says it won't be water, but fire next time. That's what the word says. It's being reserved for fire, and everything is going to be burned up, melted down. God is saying, wake up and begin to think about what you are pursuing so hard outside of him. Running for all of the money you can get, all of the material, houses, cars, clothes, luxuries, and all of that. And let me help you out. Ain't nothing wrong with none of that. But it cannot be your priority. God owns it all. <laughs> so he don't care if his children have some of it. He just don't want his children letting it have them. Because you begin to identify about everything that you can accumulate. That ain't who you are. You who God says you are. There are folk with millions that's so miserable because their health has failed them and they can't even enjoy the millions that they spent their life chasing. Family have walked away from them waiting for them to close their eyes because they feel entitled to what their parents have accumulated. And I've heard some of them even say, Mama and daddy going to be gone and all this going to be mine. So can you make me alone? Because I'll have plenty of money because they at the point they about to die. And you be wondering who could open their mouth and say something like that when your parents is at that stage. It's because they are pursuing and looking for that that's in the natural that people will put them up in this category. But what did it say? Get accepted by every organization, every group, or whatever. But if you get rejected by God, all of that is for naught. When you pursue God, like we pursue all of the natural, there'll be a peace that no one can explain. A peace that if somebody could write you a million check and get the peace that you walk in, They'd be glad to give it to you because they got the millions, but they got no peace. Right. They got no help. Right. But you got nothing compared in the natural according to what they got. Right. But child ain't nothing bothering you. You smiling, <laughs> praising God, going on about your life. They calling you. You say, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll get it when I can get it. Praise God. I thank God. He's working it out. Praise God. Because really and truly our inheritance is in the Lord. We are joint heirs with Jesus. And the word says he owns it all. We are just stewards of everything he allows us to enjoy. But we act like we don't own us. Nah, it's better to be the steward because if something is out of order, it's the owner's responsibility to get it correct. If I'm the steward, I'm just managing. But I got to manage it according to my ability and what God said in his word. He says, I gave to them according to the measure that they had. So in other words, God didn't give you no more than you can handle and manage. And if you ain't doing that well... Don't be worrying about getting no more. Ain't going to happen. Not from God. We make it hard. God laid it out and made it simple. But when you release and look to the Lord as you make your steps, all of them frustrations and the issues that life deals at you, <laughs> you'll be able to say it. It is what it is, but God is working on it. And I'm going to keep praising. I'm going to keep declaring his word so that he can do it. And you know, understand this. Everything that God promised you, there's a time frame. I'm going to bring this thing in because this could be several lessons, really, if you wanted to get into it, the different examples. But God told Abraham and Sarah that 
they were going to have a child, and Abraham was supposed to be father of nations when God spoke that to him, and he had no child. And all what, about 25 years or so, no child. But God, to make sure that he was going to be reminded of the promise, changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And her name's from Sarai to Sarah, which meant mother of the living or uh, a many, uh, father of many, right? So that when he heard that name, he would be reminded of the promise that God had already spoken. So he would not give up on that promise. But because it went so far, Sarah said, look, you old, I'm old. Maybe you need to go on in there and be with my handmaid. So you can bring forth this child if you're going to be the father of men because you got to have an heir. They're going to help God out. And guess what? Messed up things. Because when he went with the handmaiden, Ishmael came. God said, well, it's Abraham's son and I'm going to bless him and he's going to you know, have his nation and all of that. But Isaac is the one that was promised. He was the promised child. And that's the one that I talked about. But as a result of them calling themselves helping out God, they delayed the process. And now to this day, the conflict over in the Middle East is because of them calling themselves helping out God. They are against each other. And they cousins, <laughs> brothers, bro fighting. They're descendants against each other, still one on who got what right to what. And it's still going on today. We must stop moving in earthly viewpoint and deal with God according to his word. And he reminded us, I'm not slight concerning my promise. And what God said, those folks that tell you, oh, they've been talking about that for years and years. You just keep right on like no. It's going to rain, but it ain't gonna, you ain't got to tell them it's going to rain because it ain't going to rain. It's going to be fire. And that the Lord will return. But he's giving those outside of the family time to come in. And I hope that you understand the principle of what God was trying to share with us today. If we pursue him as we pursue things in the natural and being accepted by the world and the so-called folk that we put up on a pedestal. If we pursue God like we pursue them and the materialistic things, our lives would be so much better if we pursue God that much more because then we will be walking into that that he called us to and the blessings and those so called materialistic things you want they would be greater than you could ever pursue in the natural when they are not having you because as I say all the time God needs billionaires but he needs a billionaire that understands this is still God and whatever God says do with this billion, that's what I got to do because seed time and harvest. If God says sin out of that, that means God's opening up a harvest behind that seed. No seed ever been planted that some harvest did not come behind. Good seed or bad seed, all seed is designed to produce after its kind. That's the word. And when we think like that, we make better decisions and we end up with a better quality of life. Peace and not frustration. I get there when I get there. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy my way on there. I'm going to praise on the way. I'm going to move by faith as if I'm already, because technically I am already there. I just need to let it manifest and develop because he says, I have given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything we need to live in the natural and live right is already in us when we receive the gift of salvation. But it was in seed form and we have to develop it. 
waiting on the manifestation. And so when we begin to walk in that, that God created us, we'll be all right. And so when folks start talking that noise, help them out. They understand sporting events or whatever. Every game got a set of rules and instructions. They govern the game. But when you get on the field or on the court, those players have to play within the broad guidelines. But when they're on the field, they get to make the plays. They get to call the shot. And as long as they operate within the parameter of the rules of the game, ex executing the plays that they are doing at that time, and they score, that means they win legally. This is our rule and perimeter of the handbook. What God says in this word, when we open it up, because while we're operating here on earth, this is our court, this is our field. And while we're operating here and operate according to the rule book, we get to make some of those decisions because God did not create no robot where he hit a button and you go do that. Nah, he gave you the ability to use the mind, follow the leading of his Holy Spirit so that he could direct your steps. And when he spoke through the spirit unto your spirit, he wanted you to move by faith even though you didn't understand it. And it did not make sense. That's why he's God and we're the servant. And when we begin to act and walk in faith, him and the father can have a conversation. He said, yes, father, that's mine. The request has gone up. We need to grant that. They are mine. And because they are mine and they are walking according to my rule book, release that that they need. And we determine by following the parameters within the rule book. That's why we must know what the rule book says so that we don't violate and break the rule and then wondering why we didn't get credit for the point. Because if a player scores and it's outside of the boundaries or the perimeter, no good. Referee waving, don't count, don't count. I can do all the religious activities in the world that I want to do. But if they're not in line with that word, don't count because I'm operating outside of the rule book. So if that's the case, I need to know what the rule book says. That's why folk thought when I got saved earlier, I was crazy. Been saved a long time, they still think I'm crazy. But it's all right. Because while you calling me crazy, I'm enjoying what God is doing. Doors are being open. Some folk tell me at Amazon, I don't show up to work so much. I take all the time off I can get. They're talking about, you must have another job. I say, smile. I say, well, whatever I need. I have access. Might not even have a dollar in my wallet. But I got access. Because I said, God, I ain't got no money in my wallet. And I'd like to have this, I'd like to have that, and I praise you and I thank you, but I'm praising you even with no dollar in my pocket. And I go on by my business and, 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 and keep going on, smiling. Somebody come up over there while I'm looking at it, pick it up. I got it. Put it on the counter and keep moving. I praise God. I ain't seen them, didn't know them or whatever. Think like God spoke in the word and walked by faith. But what the Paul said, he learned to be content at whatever state that it was in. You see, when I'm not where I want to be, I can't let that dictate whether I'm going to still bless God, whether I'm still going to praise him, whether I'm still going to declare the word if I have to take the last step. Praise God, I still say, 
God will go down to get And if that's what you want, I'm going down praising. But guess what? God is above all. He says everything must bow at the name of Jesus. But I got to believe that and walk and declare it with authority that's already been given. That's why he placed his Holy Spirit within us to seal and to confirm when the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. But the enemy is trying to speak as well to disqualify what God has already spoken. So you must choose who you're going to believe. And then you must walk like you believe. Because see, if we got that great expectation of eternity, that will change my behavior in this life. If we really expect heaven to be like the word says, we ain't be trying to satisfy to live here because we know we're going to leave all that stuff behind. I can't carry none of that stuff with me, so it don't mean nothing. And when I'm gone, they do what they want to do with it. That's between them and them. I am gone to my reward. And when I see that and understand that, I ain't going to let these folk drive me crazy. And then I'm, I'm, they doing on what they want to do. And I'm over there laying up some minerals, too, worrying about this. Bill collector still getting money from everybody. Think I'm going to worry about it? No. Nah. <laughs> Joe Lane, keep moving. Pam want to get it. <laughs> now, I'm not advocating, not paying. But understand, there are certain things here because I said they manipulate, yeah. change your job, yeah. cut your pay, yeah. give you the pink slip. And in the process of waiting for the next door to open a transfer, it might be a time frame. But you, because of your character and who you are, you're going to take care of what needs to be taken care of. But you ain't going to let that shut you down. But the enemy has designed it to shut you down so that you won't hear what God is doing for the next door open. Because if you can't hear, you ain't going to walk in the next door. But if they shut that one and you be still and hear God, and still keep the praises and walking in faith, the next one's already open. And you'll get faith. I tell folk, your credit, it goes up and down. And they keep changing the rules, and you don't know the rules change. So one thing that used to make your score go up, now it holds it where it is. That's control. Limiting what you can and can't do, and you still trying to follow their rules. Forget their rules and do what you need to do, and do what's right. Do what's right, and give God the praise and the credit. Walk by faith, and as the choir comes, and y'all up, I'm sorry it went over a little bit, but God took it. A, he took it a whole nother route than what's on this paper. There's some of it there, but I, I, I had to give it to you the way God gave it to me today. Because God wants us to be ready. Like I said, you're going to heaven, but enjoy some heaven here before you get there. He's already given it to you. Enjoy a peace of mind. That's why we got to learn how to love and fellowship with one another. Understanding we all are different. But we're in the same family. The enemy don't want that message understood. He wants us to separate classes, different styles, different personalities. But God said you're in the body, you're in the body. And we need to encourage and love one another and walk therein. Time and time again, you'll hear that message. But it does not change what the message is. And he's not slack, and he will fulfill his promise. Why may come, and as they come, praise God. If there's any, oh, may God, 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 the pieces, praise Rick God, Donald, Julia, Steve, praise Mr. God, Mr. Allen, Miss Gladys, Robert, Eric, Jay, Ferry, Linda Watson, Tamar, Nisha. I thank you. Praise God. And as I say so many times, this is not just an act. Uh -uh. What you're doing is your act of faith. Yeah. Not a ritual, but it's your act of faith that you acknowledge unto the Lord 
that you're trusting him for that request. That's what you're doing. The enemy make you think, oh, they do that all the time. That's just going through the act. I ain't got to do that. You might not have to do it like somebody else, but God already know what you have need of. But his word says, let your request be made known unto God. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we appreciate your word. And time and time again, Lord, you may send that word to remind us, God. And we thank you, Lord, for making that word alive within us. Hallelujah. That we will be the light that you are calling us to be and walk by faith, God, to demonstrate that you are yet still alive and that you are still on the throne and that you are not slight concerning your promise. But that that you've spoken will come to pass. And we thank you, Lord, that you continue to encourage and bless us with your word so that we will stay focused and realize that we need to look at things through the lens of eternity and decide if I'm living as if I'm looking in eternity or am I living according to the world, wondering what they're going to say, trying to please the world instead of pleasing you. But God, let us please you and let our lives follow your words and let us get into your word so that you can enlighten us that we may walk in the light thereof. Because as we read your word, meditate upon your word, it reflects and shows us us not to condemn us, but to give us an opportunity to say that needs correcting and place it in your hands and by faith declare what your word says over that situation that we might give your name the praise we thank you for all that you have done God we thank you for every request that have gone forth God we thank you for that that you're yet doing right now and we thank you for that that you're about to do but God, the growth that is taking place, the manifestation of the seed that you've already planted. God, we thank you for the nurturing and the growth of that seed that we will walk into the harvest that's already laid out, that you've spoken and called into place. For you know the end from the beginning. Let us not be weary in our well doing but let us continue to help one another as you so instruct. Let us love one another as you so instruct. Let us see our brothers and our sisters as you see them, God. Unconditional love. Not critical, but encouraging. And in prayer and thanksgiving, Unity doesn't necessarily mean agreeing with everything. But what the unity means is understanding the differences that's within the group and allowing those differences to connect with the greater picture that's all in line with your rule book. Because you've given each and every one of us the responsibility and every point was count because we played according to the rule book which is the word of God for the devil has no say about what the word of God is saying he can try to discredit it but because we no longer is part of his team but a part of the heavenly team the heavenly team rules and we follow your word the word of God which is infallible and every promise that is written, you are not slack in fulfilling your promise. And we need to view and know that you will honor what your word. But we cannot get hung up on time according to our measures. For your timetable and our timetable is different because you are already present. There is no yesterday, tomorrow, and next day. 
you are, I am that I am. Whatever at the very moment that anything exists. So when we recognize and understand that you are God of eternity and not a God of time, even though we live in time, we need to view things from the eternity perspective so that our decisions will reflect and to understand that our expectations will affect our behavior. If we expect you to fulfill your promise, then we will behave like we believe and live accordingly to receive the promise that was spoken. But if we don't expect you to do it, then we're going to live like you're not going to move, move on that promise. But because you're not a man that you should lie, we know that we can stand upon thy word. And we thank you for giving us that understanding and that viewpoint. For your words, they are life and spirit. Help us to watch our mouth and to watch our words to make sure that they are aligned with the rule book, which is the word of God. We declare it to be so and give thy name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. Amen.